Today, we'll talk about our top picks for the 2023 Food and Wine Festival. That's coming up on this episode 370 of WW Prep to Go. Hello and welcome to WW Prep to Go, where we talk strategy and ideas for people planning their Disney World trips. I am your host, Shannon Albert from www.prepschool.com. Thank you for being here for episode 370. This episode is all about Food and Wine Festival, and normally I would be there for Food and Wine Festival. I'd be posting daily updates, and then I would do a whole episode where we kind of sum up the information. This year, however, I could not go, so this format is a little bit different where I had the members of my team that did go on to talk about how it went and their favorite things. So if you are planning to go to Food Wine Festival, I do encourage you to listen to this because each person had a very thoughtful list of how they would each spend $75 if they were returning to Food and Wine Festival. And in fact, they are returning to Food and Wine Festival, and this is how they are going to use their funds. Before we get into that, a reminder to follow on social media, WDW Prep School on all the platforms as well as a reminder that if you click on podcast on the website, you can filter episodes by resort or travel type or travel month, et cetera. If you're looking for specific information related to your upcoming trip, I did want to also mention that for people who are new to planning, we know that a lot of people get very overwhelmed with the planning process. So we just launched a course where there's more than 30 videos, dozens of downloadables, et cetera, walking through the steps of like choosing when to go and like which hotel to stay at, benefits of onsite and offsite and, you know, touring and all, all things that are involved in the planning process. So if you are in that camp or if you just know someone that is, we'll have a link to the, the new course that is available now in the show notes if you would like to do that. I think that is all for housekeeping now. Here's the chat I recently had with my team about Food and Wine Festival. Welcome to podcast, ladies. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. So we are talking, this is Allison, Felicia, and Heather on the team with me today. And we're talking about Food and Wine Festival today because I did not go on the trip this year because I had what? surgery. And so instead of me posting updates live during the trip, we are gathered here today to talk about how it went. What's your overall, you know, elevator pitch for Food and Wine Festival this year? It's too hot. You'll be exhausted. (laughs) But the food was better. Yeah, the food was better. There was less wine at Food and Wine, too, this year. A Mm -hmm. lot less wine. That is so interesting. Maybe you should call it food and beer. That's what we said, actually. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I wouldn't hate that. It's fine. I love wine, but I have never really enjoyed a lot of the wines at Food Mm -hmm. and Wine Festival. The beers have been better. So I guess... It being better is good if you're going to be out there in the heat. Oh, yes. Yes. And doing all the things. So that's good news because we have historically not really loved a high percentage of the things at Food and Wine Festival. So it sounds like they're improving some of the things that were always an issue. Yeah. Yeah, I I felt a lot more positive. I do too. about, About the food and drinks this time. Even Italy, which is usually a historical negative booth overall for us we didn't hate so either maybe that we were delirious from the heat and just dehydrated because we were sweating so much or they really did make some improvements mm-hmm. I, I would like to think that but so it like comparing this festival to previous years that sounds like the quality was higher but also the prices yeah they a lot of have some big increases on a lot of things felicia knows the pricing better because she has dealt with all the data so i'll let her discuss that yeah even like the beers the smaller beers would go up either 50 cents or a dollar the larger ones would go up a dollar or two the slushy in france is now 15 dollars it was already 13 and it's tiny so basically almost everything across the board went up around a dollar which when it started at four or five dollars an item that's a large percentage yeah. there are a few booths that the prices would only go up a quarter or something which seems more reasonable but 
those were few and far between. So it was a lot more expensive this year. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's unfortunate. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's not cheap. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this time next year, we'll be talking about dining plan credits and how Mm -hmm. to use them because they are, they might be a great value for some of these items as they keep increasing in in price. So that'll be good. Any other big differences? Better food, higher prices on several items. What about like the number of booths or like anything like that happening this year? Well, I feel like there are the same, pretty much the same number of booths. There are some that aren't there this year, like Earth Eats they got rid of, but they took the Impossible Slider that was popular there and they put that over at Flavors Flavors from Fire. Two booths aren't opening until later this year, or uh, actually August 15th, which is not that far away. That's Noodle Exchange in Hawaii. And then four new booths are opening September 22nd for the Disney 100 celebration. So we didn't get to try those six. But overall, I think it was pretty much the same amount of boost that we had to tackle. There's a lot. Yeah. It's a it's the biggest one by far, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of number of booths. And, and not just number of booths, but some of the booths have so many items. Like brewing has like you get 14 chickens. Worth yeah, it's like of eight <laughs> food drinks. and eight drinks or something like that. Seven food items, eight drinks. And it's It'll, a lot. Yeah, Italy has a lot. Some mm-hmm. of the booths are just, there's a lot of items there. So that really adds up. Are they still enforcing the two drinks per person limit at the booths? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's an in- interesting thing to know if you want to sample a bunch of drinks. But for us, it's a logistical challenge because mm-hmm. if there are all these items at the booths, then there has to be enough people to carry them and, you know, only two drinks per person. So that's a big part of this. And Felicia mostly heads up that effort for us at the festivals <laughs> because it's like, how do we do this? How do we even pull it off? She has perfected the ordering at the booths. I I don't even want to try anymore <laughs> because she knows exactly what to say to make sure that everything gets added to the to the tally of what we're ordering. So spoiler, she, you can't just say you want one of everything. You have to name out every single item that you want, what size of every item. Otherwise, you'll end up with bottles of water and power bar missing <laughs> half the items. So I also like Very when specific. she's ordering and they think like she'll say like two items and they're like, okay, the total is she's like, no, 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 no I'm no, not no. done. I, I'm still going. <laughs> I, I've heard people say that you can say like, what's it called? Full house. Full house. Full house. But not mm-hmm. all that doesn't always work. No, I no. feel like the kitchen staff may know that more because that's where you hear it. Uh-huh. But the people taking your orders don't know that. Okay. So don't try that. Don't try to be yeah. cool and just make a shortcut. Yes. Don't. I would not suggest it. All right. Well, that's good to know. All right. Well, even though Food and Wine Festival is probably our least favorite of the festivals, it might also be the most popular. Right. So that's why we go. And I think it's super helpful to for the people that do want to go narrow it down to what we think is good or maybe even more importantly, avoid the things we know are bad because it really frustrates me (laughs) knowing, I mean, it's one thing for us to spend money on all the things and be out in the heat and, and whatever. But when people have one shot at it and they waste $15 and lots of time and sweat on something that's not good, it Mm -hmm. really, that really irritates me. So I really like the idea of giving people information to help them, you know, increase their odds. (laughs) <laughs> so in, in that spirit, I asked you all to <laughs> pretend you're going back and spending $75, which I think is a reasonable budget, don't you think, for a person? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's just definitely. going for like a day mm-hmm. and pick what you would buy with that $75. And this is, for this conversation, it's hypothetical, but for at least Heather, I know it's it's real because she's going back with her husband and going to actually do this. And that, this is interesting to me more than just like, what are your favorite things? Because it forces you to choose what is worth it within that $75. So that means that you like it and it's like a decent portion and, mm-hmm. you know, all of that. So I think it's telling what you would spend your own money on. So Allison, would you like to start? Allison, for the record, sure. share your your special diet so that people will have some information. Yes. So, so she's a vampire. <laughs> So 
I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat meat or seafood. I do eat dairy here and there, so I'm not completely vegan. But a lot of the plant-based items are obviously on my list. Can we talk about specifically plant-based or vegetarian items for the festivals? Like, is this the worst of the festivals for plant-based stuff? Actually, at first, you know, when we went a couple years ago, I felt like I struggled. I don't know if they were just spread out more this year. So it didn't feel as like I was like starving at each booth because, you know, Earth Eats was like the one booth that was all plant-based. But now that they added the slider somewhere else, like it helps space space out my eating. I thought there were quite a few really good plant-based options this year. Okay. That's good news. And I, I do think that's probably better for them to spread things out because we yes. were in one of the many logistical things of us planning our trips has been like, is Allison going to have stuff to eat? <laughs> because so many of the booths would have, you know, very little. And we're like, but she has to eat more than, you know, a pastry or whatever. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that they're more spread out so that, and that you have more options. So mm-hmm. what would you fit in your $75? Okay. I actually have 50 cents to spare. $74.50. Ooh, she's, she's a frugal gal. So surprisingly, I would go back to brewing, not for the pickle milkshake. Nobody waste your money on that. I would go back for the impossible buffalo chicken tenders that come with plant-based blue cheese and plant-based ranch. This is a new item this year. You get a ton for $7.50. They're really good. This actually was a like group favorite. Okay. I was going to um, ask everybody else if they also enjoyed. Yeah. And they are a little on the spicy side, but I usually don't handle spice or heat well, but these were fine for me. And you get, like I said, you get a lot for your money and they aren't messy. So you don't have to worry about like picking them up. You can use a fork and a knife because there aren't any bones. So I really enjoyed these. I think it's a great option. I love that. The name of the food booth brewing would not make me think they had options for you because it's always just been chicken wings. Yeah. Yeah. I was glad that they added it this year because I was hoping because last year they only added plant-based Brussels sprouts, which are also back this year. And I like those, but I would rather go back for the uh, plant-based chicken tenders. And then I, at this booth, I also would get a six ounce of the Brew Hub French Connection IPA. It was probably my favorite IPA at the whole festival, and that's only $5.50. You can also get a 12 ounce for, I think it's $9.50. So those would be my two items at that booth. And they, I think they pair well together. And if you're lucky enough, you can sit inside and eat them. Yes. If there's it's a very busy booth. So very busy. Be prepared. Rope drop, rope drop it. Rope drop it. <laughs> it's, is it. It's busy because of the pickle milkshake? Yeah. And I also don't know. We were there for the very first day. So I don't know if it will always be that busy. But I think that was the main thing people were going for when we were there. I want to say last year, was it a, an an orange bird sipper or something like that? That, that was, was Flower and Garden. Flower and Garden. Okay, it was Slaring Garden. Yeah, they always seem to have something that draws the crowds. And I guess mm-hmm. this year it's a yucky milkshake. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so that sounds like a good start. Yes. And um, we're, up, we're up to like $12, $13. Okay. Um, these aren't in like the order I would eat them. This just, I just okay. threw this together. So okay. next would be Flavors from Fire. They have the Impossible Burger Slider that comes with wasabi cream and spicy slaw and a sesame seed bun. That's also plant-based. It's a returning item. It's one of my favorites. And it's only $6. And I think it's pretty filling. And it's mm-hmm. nice to have it at that booth because there aren't any anything else that I can eat, eat there besides the dessert. So mm-hmm. next would be the fry basket, which is actually near Flavors from Fire. Now, I have two options here. They both cost $5.50. I feel like this would be a how I would feel in the moment. Would I want the new pickle fries? Because they were really good. <laughs> Or And those are not plant-based. Or do I want the adobo yucca, yucca, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, fries with the garlic cilantro aioli. And that is a returning item. So I like both of those. The plant-based fries, you get a ton for your money. So that's like a nice little snack. But both are really good, in my opinion. Okay. I, I have noticed more of the yucca or yucca fries, however you pronounce them, popping up. Yes. And they're they're so good. Yeah, I love getting those at Nomad Lounge. They're really yes, good. Yes, that's mostly where I see them pop up. Yeah. Where we <laughs> sit and have drinks and, and right. appetizers. <laughs> then the Grease booth, which is overall just a really good booth in general. Like, you can't go wrong there. Except I did not choose the plant-based item that is new there this year. I 
It was very sad. I did not like it. As Heather and Felicia described it, it tastes like Christmas. The very interesting flavor. What? What was it? It's a impossible moose. Is it moussaka? moussaka? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I wanted it, to love it, but oh, I just. And it tastes like Christmas. It's an interesting, like the seasoning's interesting. I don't know. But what I would get was the is the Spanakopita, which is only four dollars and seventy five cents, and this is a returning item. And it's I also do love the grilled cheese, but the Spanakopita just hit different this year for me. It's nice and flaky, and it's filled with cheese and spinach, and it's just really good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah. And then at Flavors of America, which is obviously in the America Pavilion, last year or the past few years, this was the hops and barley booth. It's they have some new items, but. The item I chose is a returning item. It's the carrot cake. And I think it's a good size for only $4.50. It might be a little too heavy for some people on a hot day. And the cream cheese icing does melt pretty fast, but it's it's still so good. I think it's one of the best desserts at the festival. I do think that has to be a heavy factor Mm -hmm. is the heat. Not everything tastes good when you're in 100 degree heat. Yeah, I agree. We found and that a lot with a lot of the a, items. Just as a side note, I will have all these things that they're mentioning today in the show notes so people can reference them. You don't have to memorize them as you're listening to the audio. <laughs> and then the India booth, which this is another just good booth in general. Like everything was really good there. They have a plant-based potato and pea samosa with coriander lime cream. And this is another returning item. And it's $5.50. And last year I found them too spicy, but this year I didn't. And it's just a really good item. And they're decent. You get two samosas and they're decent size. And I think it's just a really good item. Is that over by Refreshment Outpost? Outpost, yeah. Okay. So between China and the Outpost. All right. And then in Japan, they have the Brew Hub Momo Amber Ale. And this was probably one of the best beers. I think we can all agree. This is probably one of the best beers we had. I think we were all shocked how good it was. And you can get a six ounce or a 12 ounce. And it's just, I can't describe it. I definitely recommend it. It's really, really good. Was that new? Yes, it was new this year. Okay, so that's why you're surprised mm-hmm. you had never had. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's the one thing you definitely should get at the Japan booth. And then at Refreshment Outpost, this is where you can get full size alcoholic beverages like you can't get like a six ounce or 12 ounce you have to get the full size and they're they are a little bit more expensive so they're 11 dollars and 25 cents and all three are actually really good but i would go back for the cider boys mango tango hard cider i thought it was really refreshing it was just so hot that day and it just had a really good flavor so and we had really good luck at that location like the big beers and the food options yeah, are they're often usually good. pretty good. It's like not too expensive for what it is and like pretty high quality. Mm-hmm. I do wonder if people know that that is part of Food and Wine Festival because it's not like a kiosk looking right. thing like most of them. It's yeah. it's always there. It's just that they have festival things that rotate out. But mm-hmm. like I just think I'm mentioning it because I just think as a general rule, people should consider stopping there no matter yeah. when they no matter when they go. And there is a really good plant-based option there too, which I like every year. It's the spicy Gathiri and it's like, I think it's only like $5 and you get a really great portion. They're like, as much as I like it, I would go back for the other food that I've mentioned over that, but it's still a really good choice if people are looking for another plant-based item. Okay. And then at Spain, I would get, this is new this year, they have a sangria flight and you get a white, a red, and a rosé and Oh my God, it was so good. It was just like, it comes with ice. So like it didn't water it down too much, but it was just like nice and cold and refreshing. And the red was probably my least favorite, but I still loved all of them. And I'm not like a wine or sangria person usually. And you can also just get individual glasses of these two. You don't mm-hmm. have to get the flight, which is nice. So you would get the whole flight because you I would get the all. whole flight because I just, I like them all. Okay. I thought it was just really good. Well, that sounds delicious. And then finally, I love how, these last few are just all drinks. <laughs> Finally, I would go to Brazil, not for the cheese bread, which I still recommend everybody avoiding at all costs there because it's gummy and it's gross. I don't care what anybody else says. I would go back for, I think I'm saying this correctly, the Shingu Brazilian Black Lager. I'm not normally a dark beer person, but I first had this when I lived in L.A. 
and I fell in love with it then and I could never get it anywhere. And I think they only just added it recently, like maybe last year to the festival. And I'm so glad that they brought it back because it's a really nice light, dark lager and it's just really good flavor. And you can get that in a six ounce or a 12 ounce as well. Well, that sounds like a good list. Like I would feel good about having all those different options because like I was visualizing as you were talking. I'm like, they're kind of all over. Mm -hmm. So you could meander, get a drink, meander, get another one, get another snack or whatever. Yeah. And they have plenty of options for you. Yeah, which is makes me happy. So, (laughs) yeah, well, that's a good list. I like it. So did anything on her list make your list, Heather and Felicia? Both. Okay. So that's going to be a big endorsement to have multiple people include them on their list. (laughs) All right, Felicia, would you like to go next with your picks? And we talked about, I wanted to give just a little reference for like your interests or your diet. You don't have the restrictions that the others do. Yes, I don't have any restrictions in terms of eating. I will say I don't prefer to eat seafood from a festival booth, especially in the heat. And you'll probably see that in my reviews. And on this trip, I was the only one eating that stuff. Did not enjoy it. (laughs) Yeah, normally it's just me and Felicia that yeah. can have seafood. And it is it is really hard to do at a festival. Yes. Yeah. It's not the most fun. And then also I, in general, don't really care for super sweet drinks, super sweet desserts. I don't like ice cream, milkshakes, those sort of things. So I'm more of a savory person and drier drinks in general. So my stuff is based on that. I chose, I have six different food items and then four different drink items. And I apparently didn't choose any desserts. So you said you're not a big sweet person. You're a savory person. Yeah. So yeah, that that tracks. And I will start with the fry basket. There is only one item that I would have gone back there for. And it's the pickle fries is what they're called. But they're really just fried pickle spears. I'm a huge fan of those. And I thought that they were well done at the fry basket. The only thing I don't like is that Booth has a long line a lot. It usually moves pretty quickly, but sometimes you can be stuck waiting for your items because they are frying stuff fresh. But it's only five fifty for the pickle fries, and I love them. So that would be my first food item. And then flavors from fire, there is the smoked corned beef with house-made potato chips, cheese curds, pickled onions, and beer cheese fondue. Mm. It is so, so good. They've had this at Flavors from Fire, and I think at some other booth before Flavors from Fire in the past few years. And every year, it's so delicious. I think, I know Heather really likes it as well. I would happily eat that as a meal. So that was one. And that one's only six fifty. So it's a huge portion. It's like a whole boat of chips with a ton of corned beef and toppings. Super good. Brewing. I have an item there. I really liked the Impossible Tenders. I didn't expect to like them. I just thought the texture would be off-putting because they were pretty big, like thick tenders, but it wasn't. But I still like the Brussels sprouts more. So if I was going to go back there, I was going to get the Brussels sprouts. So those are $5. They're plant-based, served with buffalo, plant-based blue cheese, and ranch. And so it's a nice big portion, savory item. I didn't personally care for many of the beers or ciders there, so... And I didn't like eating the wings with bones, so. I'm Not picturing for- you and Allie going to these booths together and like she gets the yuca fries, you get the pickle fries, she gets yeah. the plant-based and you get the Brussels sprouts. I'm like, this could work out. <laughs> Not going to lie. We were talking about our trip during the Halloween party and going back to food and wine and we were coordinating the items that were overlapping for us. Like, well, <laughs> if I got this here, then you could get mm-hmm. that there and we could share it. <laughs> I also assume that between the three of us, a lot of our booths are going to overlap because there are just some booths that the food items are far better than the others and they're a good value. But I do think that's one interesting thing about this is like you independently came up with these lists and there's going to be some overlap. Yes. Yep. So those are my first three food items and then kind of working around World Showcase. The next stop would be India. And so like Ali said, that was a great booth. Honestly, pretty much everything there is delicious. All the food items are great. Drink items, not for everyone, but I recognize everything was of good quality and a good price. So I would choose the chicken tikka masala there. It's a huge portion. It's a bowl. It has rice, the, mas- the chicken masala on top, non bread, and it's only six twenty five. dollars Like that would be legitimately an entire meal for me. And it's super spicy. So if you're not a fan of spicy items, it's probably not for you, but I loved it. And like I said, only $6.25, so great deal. And then 
next door at Refreshment Outpost, I also would get one of the full-size beers there. I'm not a cider fan. I thought the mango cider was good. Still too sweet for me. But they had a watermelon hibiscus lager. That was my favorite beer there. It was light, refreshing. You could taste the watermelon, but it wasn't overpowering and super fruity. So I loved it. And it would have gone perfectly with the chicken tikka masala. And they're right next door. So I probably would pair those and eat those at the same time. And then further around at Spain, just like Allie, I would get the sangria flight because it's... The whole flight. I'm fascinated by that. Because it's not like you you didn't pick out a favorite and say I'd get the full size. You're like, whole flight. Yes, whole flight. And I took into account like cost and other drink items available at the festival. And, you know, I could get basically two different small beers or two other drinks somewhere else. But I would choose the three sangrias in the flight just because they were good. They were strong without being overpowering. Like Ali said, iced, not too fruity. It didn't taste like box sangria. Like they were just really, really good. So I'd get that there. And then also the charcuterie. So the char- the meat. In a, cu- in a cup? Mother calls it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. And so that's just different meats and cheeses with the, and olives and a like herb vinaigrette. Mm-hmm. Super good. And that's six fifty. And so it's enjoyable because it is a charcuterie, but you eat it with your, a fork so you don't have to use your fingers and get your fingers dirty. And and it it pairs well with the sangria. So really liked both of those items and would happily go back for those. And you might very soon. Yes, I, I do plan to. <laughs> this is not necessarily just theoretical. Okay. All of, all of you, this is real. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And then at the Flavors of America booth, I would actually get the whole beer flight there. So that one has a lager, an IPA, and I don't remember now what the amber, third. Yeah, I think it was in the amber. amber. Yeah, the sawtooth amber. And so three, you know, pretty different types of beer, but they're all very good. Like the lager is very light and easy to drink. The IPA is a little hoppy, but not too strong. And then the amber is also really easy to drink. So all perfect, especially in the weather. A good deal for a six ounce beer, it's five fifty, but for the whole flight, it's ten dollars. And so. I like the variety and the options there. And then Tangerine Cafe, another solid booth where every food item is good. All the drinks mostly are good. Maybe not the fig cocktail. I would get the stone-baked Moroccan bread. So that's, it's vegetarian. I don't know that it's plant-based, but it's just a giant piece of bread with three different sauces and they're all super delicious. And it's only $5. And so big fan of that one. That's another one of those weird ones where it's a booth in quotes, but like it's a permanent building. Permanent so I don't, I don't know if everyone knows that it's a booth. And mm-hmm. Yeah, that is plant based, Felicia. It is. Yeah, mm-hmm. we love it. We all, we always love it there in some capacity. Yes, and it's never a long line. You can sometimes sit inside. It's just a very enjoyable booth to visit. Mm-hmm. And so I have six dollars left at this point, and I was down. <laughs> I was known between two items. One was the Zingu Brazilian Black Lager. And then the other is the Brew Hub Momo that's at Japan. So both of those are things that Ali referenced. I think between the two, I would go for the one at Japan just because I loved it. But I was putting the other one on here in case both Ali and Heather chose the Brew Hub Momo because I didn't want all of us to have the same thing necessarily. <laughs> but honestly, if it was up to me, I would go back to Japan and get the Brew. that amber ale it Mm -hmm. it doesn't taste like an amber ale it's very confusing it's not at all what was expected but it is delicious well that sounds good there's definitely gonna be a lot of overlap between the two of you yes and they allison and felicia were just talking about going for the halloween party because they are going for the first two mickey's not so scared halloween parties and they're going to go back to three nine festivals so they they do have one more thing to say on that Mm -hmm. so i I wanted to say at Mexico, I wanted to include the taco that was there, but it's $8 for one taco. And I couldn't justify for one little taco and $8 out of my budget. And then I also considered the frozen rosé at the Alps, which is $9. I didn't want to spend that amount of money on it personally. But if you're, if you want like a frozen slushy item between at France, they have the frozen slushy that's $15 or they have the frozen rosé at the Alps for $9. I think the Alps frozen rosé is a good substitute if you want something like what they offer in France, but not spending $15 on a similarly sized item. 
Okay. So that would be my suggestion. That's a good thought. That sort of thing. So you like the things. They just were hard to justify within your $75. Yes. I didn't like them enough to pay that. Amount, yeah. Even well, though it was a couple dollars more than other items. Yeah. All, it adds up. That is good to know. Heather, is there anything on your list that they haven't mentioned? <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple, but really my list is very similar. Also, I did not like having a budget. <laughs> are, are you? I didn't know you didn't have a budget. <laughs> well, the seventy five dollars that was really that was really tricky for me. I just wanted it all, so I'm gonna go ahead and complete the trifecta. I too have the Brew Hub Momo Amber Ale from Japan because I don't. It was our very last booth that we were there for. One of the last things we tried and. It, I'm glad we ended with it because it was it was amazing. So everybody, Felicia and Allison have already talked about it. So you know how good it is, but definitely would do that. Over at Flavors from Fire. And again, these are in any order. This was just me randomly looking back at menus and having my mouth water. And that was my indication that I needed to go ahead and eat it again. So <laughs> Flavors from Fire, the smoked corned beef with house made potato chips. I think it was on Felicia's list mm -hmm. too. Well, I guess it wouldn't have been on Allison's. Wouldn't. <laughs> also not on not on mine <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing and i love it it's it's delicious and also only 650 and it's a pretty good size portion so i think that's a good deal i think the only negative that i have for it is that it can get a little soggy because of the the chips and the sauces and stuff on top but other than that it's delicious and then over at refreshment port the braised beef poutine. I absolutely love it. And I it, I know it's expensive, but you get full-size portions at both the refreshment port and over at Outpost for like your serving sizes are big. So the braised beef, beef poutine is $10. But then also there, I really, really love the orange whipped hard seltzer from Boulevard Brewing. I think it was delicious. And I don't know if it was because at that point I was just so hot and having something light and refreshing that had good flavor was just absolutely necessary for me to continue going. But I would definitely I think, get it again. I feel like they can charge $58 for poutine and you'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm fitting that in my budget. That's absolutely what it would have been my only item had it been. That's fine. I will just keep buying the same thing over and over. So definitely, but that poutine, it has like the cheese in it <laughs> and it's like really creamy and good. It's not like a cheese curd. Are there cheese curds in there, Felicia? Or is it only just the... I don't think so. It's just the creamy the, cheese. Yes, I with think. The, with the beef juice. Mm -hmm. it's so good. I'm really getting hungry. It just made me gag. <laughs> Being beef juice. <laughs> Beef cheese of gravy. I'm sorry. Beef gravy. <laughs> yes, there is a word for that. I agree with Felicia that Mexico's prices are a little steep, but I really was disappointed in Mexico last year. And I really, really like the tostada this year. So the tostada made my list. It's a tostada de carnitas with braised pork on a fried corn tortilla with black beans and avocado. And it was, I just thought it was, it was one item but it was a decent size and it was really delicious it had really good flavor in it i liked it personally better than the taco that felicia mentioned then over in spain so we've left mexico now we're over in spain i would get the full size white sangria okay so sangria but full size. <laughs> yes so well and it's, i don't even think it's a full size i think it's still a smaller size like it's not like the big giant cups but I really like the white one. I like the rosé one. I like the red one the least. Mm -hmm. yeah, so maybe after I spent my first $75, I'd find somebody to give me money and I'd go back and I'd get the rosé <laughs> one too. You're out there with a, your panhandling? Panhandling. At to Epcot. Get, <laughs> to get more sangria. Mm -hmm. But I too would get the sangria and then the charcuterie. I don't know why that's so good. It's nothing fancy. It's literally meat in a cup with a couple olives, but it's a huge portion size mm -hmm. and it's not heavy and refreshing. And it just goes really, really well with that sangria. So I think you just explained why you like it so much. Thank you. It's portable, enough to portable, eat, refreshing, mm -hmm. delicious. 
you get protein, all those important things. And then in India, I think this was on Allison's list, the potato and pea samosa. Really, really, really love that. But like what Felicia said, India, never a long, a long line. Their prices are very reasonable and their food is really, really good. So huge. Def- One of my personal passions with the festival is booths that are good. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you, based on things that you guys have said so far, there are a few that definitely stand out. Because it's like, if you're going to stand in line, it's so nice to be able to get at least a couple things. Yes. Instead of just like one thing. Eat four bites. Go to the next booth. Four. You know what I mean? Yes. It, it just feels like a good use of time. Agree. Agree. Especially when it's so hot. You don't want to stand in 29 lines. It'd be a lot easier to pick a few and get several really good things there. Mm-hmm. Over in Tangerine Cafe, I am not a huge cider person, but I really liked the peach party peach and blackberry hard cider there. I thought that was very, very delicious, very refreshing. Didn't really taste too much like a cider, which is an endorsement for me. So I would grab that. And then I don't know why I love griddle cheese, but I love griddle cheese. You do. I am a huge fan of just hunks of cheese that have been griddled in (laughs) any form. So the griddled cheese makes my list. And I, if I got this like this, then I wouldn't have to share it. That's the best part. <laughs> it would just be me. I'd just be eating it. And then finally, the left-hand brewing sawtooth amber ale at Flavors of America. The flight was delicious, but I really liked that one in particular. Well, that sounds all really good to me. I'm hoping I can fit in a trip during food and wine and go and eat some of these things because really? they sound good. Delicious. But there's a couple booths that I didn't hear mentioned that I would love to talk about. One is France. Oh, France. Oh, France. So France is popular. Mm-hmm. Like so much so that we often rope drop it, right? Mm-hmm. To be there. Like literally as soon as the festival opens, we're there because the lines grow. Mm-hmm. Nothing mentioned from France, I don't think. No. Just negatives. We, yeah. We again did rope drop it, which we were glad we did because the line grew quickly. It's just... I just, it's not as good as everyone says. And I don't know if it's just this particular festival. I, I did like the three cheese beignet that they always have there. I think that was, we put as one of our favorite items from the booth, but I also wouldn't go stand in line for it when mm-hmm. I could go get all these other things that were exponentially better. And like we said, the slush, the slushy, we usually like them and we're always like, okay, but no, like you're going to spend a little bit more. But this one was like artificial, super sweet, artificial. It was new this year. It melts so fast. And like $15, I just yeah. think it's a ripoff. Mm-hmm. I think in general, the booths that are super popular, like France, Italy, even China to a degree, they're generally very overpriced and the quality just isn't there. And I don't know if it's because they're having to churn out so much food so quickly, but it's just almost never well executed. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, that was going to be my next thing was Italy, because historically, it has usually been our least favorite booth in terms of quality and price. Like it's most expensive, but it's the worst. This year, not quite that bad, but also you didn't mention it as your favorite. No, the bar was really low. So they didn't have to do much to get off the ground. I think one of our things that really that really bother us is they don't tell you where the alcohol is from. Like you don't Say get it. Prosecco or... Yes, it's just generic. And that to me really irks me because how can you review something if you don't know if it's going to be the same? Like, what are they going to open tomorrow? Right. It's it's their house, whatever they have. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But also it's expensive. It is. And like one of the things I like that you guys did when you were posting reviews on Instagram was the overall cost of each booth, which is not something we've ever posted before. And it really makes that booth especially stand out because it's like, look how much more it is. Than mm-hmm. all the other mm-hmm. ones. Yes. And that is, it's not worth it. Skip Italy. I feel like it's a shoe in for a lot of people. They're like, how could you go wrong with Italy? But yeah. it's not good. No, that whole pocket over there, like Germany, the Alps, Italy, I feel like it, people just swarm there and it gets really crowded and really busy. 
And also, I don't think there's any hot, any walk that's more hot than from Germany to America. Like, I think that is just the most brutal walk. And so I just, just avoid that whole area. <laughs> just, yeah. just skip it. At least when it comes to purchasing things. Just get your stuff in India and mm-hmm. drink it while walking through to a better area. Yes. Yes. If you can find some extra money, like if somebody gave you five, six more dollars, maybe go ahead and get the fondue, the chocolate fondue from the Alps, because that was really good, too. But if you if you can't get any more money, then just keep walking. <laughs> I have a sign up. Here's my Venmo. <laughs> I was going to put it on the back of my shirt. Uh-huh. I, you know, listen, I think there are people that in the niche do stuff like that. Oh, no. Okay. You I'm know not what I mean? Gonna, I'm kidding. They do. Everyone. They do. They do. I am not going to do that. I'm so sorry. I like, did not know. Like, I'm, I'm sheltered. At, like, I'm a food and wine festival. Send me gifts on YouTube uh, or Venmo's or whatever to pay for my <laughs> I'm so cringing right now. I know. It makes my face turn. So what about, like, an, a worst item or two? Like, you guys said the pickle, <laughs> the pickle milkshake was bad. Yes. That was but, really bad, but, but it was designed I designed to be bad. It was. Yeah. I also feel like they designed it to go with those extremely spicy wings to cut mm-hmm. that spice. I think yes. that's the only reason they did it because they have a new wings there and they're like unnecessarily hot. hot. But just a, just a regular milkshake could do that, too, though. <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> like vanilla yeah. or chocolate. But would I think the Muppets getting... make a regular one? Yeah. yeah. That's true. So I think it's getting the attention that they wanted, which is oh, that, absolutely like especially the first day that booth has two lines and they were zigzag back and forth and out the door on both sides. I mean, just to say that you've tried it and it's not good and it's overpriced. It's Did real you get gross. a cute cup? <laughs> were there <laughs> were there any other things that come to mind that you were like that? That's really the worst thing ever. Let the- I will let Felicia talk about Ireland. She <laughs> loves that booth. <laughs> yes. It's a seafood stew or whatever. I think that's what it's called. It is. Yeah. And it's it's a hot <laughs> seafood. Who it's supposed to be like a shepherd's pie, but and it's filled with seafood. And it's, you know, eight billion degrees outside. And it just tastes bad. Like it it's really it smells fish. bad. It smells yeah. terrible. It's like it to me, it tastes like fish that has gone bad, that's hot. Oh. And yeah. I'm so glad I didn't have to eat being it. served out of booth. Like I I dread it every year and I think it's not as it's not gonna be as bad as you built it up in your head and that it is is really, really gross. Yeah. And I don't I, know why they have it. Having been that person with you multiple <laughs> times, I will concur that I think it's a good rule to just avoid the seafood at Food mm-hmm. Festival. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's Along really with, hard yeah. to get it right at those little booths and the heat. It's like rubbery and yeah. Even a normal shepherd's pie would be an odd choice to serve at a place that's generally like 90 something degrees. But then you add in the seafood element and it just doesn't make sense. They really need to bring back. They used to have like a Irish bread or something with like the cheese dipping. That They need to bring that back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Instead of that. And get and rid that, of the honey mead wine. They also yes. that Because it tastes like medicine. Yes. And the, along with the whole seafood and this, the whole flavors of America area, they have a seafood stew over there too that that odor just covers that whole area Mm -hmm. so even if you're not eating it you can't escape it you can't like you're walking out of the fish market when Mm -hmm. you walk over there and it's hot and so it's just surrounds you to you Mm -hmm. it's so it's not appetizing Mm -hmm. yeah and then there's also the delirium red beer oh Oh, at belgium Belgium. cough syrup like cough syrup oh it's it's thick. It's oh, it's brutal. I don't understand why people buy it. Thick. <laughs> that's not a. That's with not two a word. C's. That's not a word you want to associate with beer. No. no. And no. I like stouts. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Ew, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, Sy- syrupy. I think that syrupy. Would be, yeah, yeah, viscous. Yes, <laughs> viscous. <laughs> this is. I have discovered my new appetite suppressant, which is asking you all about your least favorite thing. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's real bad. Yeah. yeah really bad. Get away with that one. But it sounds like you got a lot of, a lot of good things, though. So that's yeah, the good news. We did. <laughs> Can if you guys remember the overall total of the whole festival, like what it cost to eat and drink everything? I will pause here for anyone listening to make a guess. 
what it is while they look for the number. I think it was like $1,145. Yeah. So that makes sense. I think we usually budget 1200 for festivals. I think, I mean, Flower and Garden and Food and Wine at least. And that tends to work out about right. Because mm-hmm. we also like pick up waters and. Okay. So it was $1,145 and Italy was 104. Yep. And there out were of 28 booths, booths or eight something. Booths. Out of 28 booths. That is a very interesting step. Mm-hmm. So. Yes, most gifts were in the $50 range. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, and there's a lot of variables in there too, because some have more items than others or whatever, but Italy is just wildly expensive for yeah. all their things. Mm-hmm. So, and keep in mind that there are still the six booths that we haven't had yet. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Later. They'll be, yeah, they'll be open later. So there'll be even more for people going in, what is it, late September through November, mid November, something mm-hmm. like that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, That is all very helpful. I'm hoping I can fit in a trip and I'll be taking your guys' suggestions. So thanks for doing the hard work with one person gone. You you did it. Yay. (laughs) All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. All of the information, all of their favorites are listed in the show notes. If you would like to have those as a reference, I am going to make it those notes in case I am able to go during Food and Wine Festival before it ends in November. I think that will wrap up this episode of WW Prep to go. For more information, please check the show notes in your podcast app or head to the website www.prepschool.com. Click on podcast at the top, scroll down to episode 370. Until next time, I will see you on the site.